in a, a post after this or something. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Okay. Vivian and Moa, are you guys, the, I assume, East Coast with the humidity? East Coast, that's right. Yeah. Where are you, Jeff? I'm in Marin. It's like okay. North San Francisco, so it's really nice. Where, where are you? And sunny and not humid at all right now. So it's pretty, pretty good today. Awesome. So what does everyone have uh, lined up for the weekend? That's a, that's a very tricky question yeah. these days because it's, <laughs> it's asking me again. <laughs> I'm up in uh, Massachusetts. What, what'd you say, Jeff? I'm going on a bike ride, then not leaving my house after that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Similar. There's a. I have access to a lake right now and a kayak, which is really nice. It's the only way to get like farther away from people. So do a little bit of that and, and yeah, mostly stay local. Yeah, we actually found a spot in uh, Southern uh, Washington that is already in phase three and there's almost no uh, cases there. So we're going to go there, not this weekend, but the following weekend. Wow. Uh, at, the, at the west of the, of the, uh, of the Olympic. That's awesome. I can't. Yeah. I haven't done anything outdoors really. Hard, <laughs> it's hard to in Brooklyn. Hard, hard to in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people out. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of uh, some of my friends in New York are just you know left left, left town, unfortunately. Yeah. I've been doing it by way of uh, attending some peaceful protests outside of the park. So awesome. <laughs> yes. Have you been down to Maria Hernandez? I have. I went to Maria cool. Hernandez. Um, I went to South Brooklyn, uh, City Hall, the Supreme Court. Awesome. Much across the bridge. Very cool. I did a, I did a bike, bike, bike protest. Those are not like a bit critical bike. mass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a, yeah. Critical mass. Yeah. In the dark. It's crazy. <laughs> How about you? Have you gone down to Maria Hernandez? Yeah. The the first one. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to mute ago. and leave for one second. I'm going to come back in a minute. Okay. Yeah, yeah there was one. Uh, I think it was a couple weeks ago, like one of the first when the protest started, like the end of that week. Yeah. I think Julia Salazar was there. Ah, uh, cool. uh, Julia Salazar. Okay. Yeah. That's really awesome. Yeah. Isabel. Yeah, this is my first time using Bizabo. Me too. And it's an it's cool. I have known so many people who have worked for Bizabo. Mm. Um, just like I, I know it's, they're based out of Israel, right? It's a cool like event. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But like, oh, it's Bizabo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm in it. Cool. I'm yeah. using it now. Yeah, it's pretty, Jeff it works pretty well, I think. All right. Yeah. How's the day been for you, Jeff? Uh, pretty, I'm, I'm just kind of helping David out uh, a little extra, you know, making, making sure things go right. I, uh, it's nice of you. Yeah. But I'm uh, after, after make sure you guys are up and running. I, I actually have to go try to do some sales myself because. Okay. <laughs> a day job. Room, playing on the webinar all day. Speaking of you then hopping out when we're done. Yeah. Do we just log out? Yeah. Like if you see like the top right, like right to left where it says participants. Yeah. <laughs> You click that thing and it says confirm end session. So okay. whoever, you know, is a moderator, you can do that. And that'll okay. turn off the recording when you're done. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Do I click the X then, I imagine? Oh, maybe maybe it's a different view. Uh, oh, no, to the left of the X. Like It looks like a little like, arrow going in a door. Ah, okay. I see. Yeah. I'll do that. But don't click it yet because that'll, that'll it'll turn it off. Close it out. Yeah. And what company are you both with? Uh, I'm uh, I'm with Diligent Corporation. Okay. It's, it, it's yeah. A, it's a it's a big SaaS company that nobody's ever heard of. So. Yeah, heard of it. <laughs> it is a, it is a big company. 
Yeah, it's a big company nobody has ever heard of. I didn't even hear about it when they uh, they reached out to me. <laughs> yeah, I started with them. So it's, That's so uh, funny. It's a modern governance um, cloud, essentially, for board of directors and C-suite and leadership, a variety of different governance tools, um, from Intel Analytics to subsidiary management, um, risk and compliance, lots yeah. of fun topics, very technical, but very relevant <laughs> at this yeah. point. Oh, yeah. Yep. Necessary. Yes. Um, I'm with Greenhouse. We okay. make uh, recruiting technology. Okay. Yeah, I've heard of Greenhouse. Yeah. I helped David on the side, and I sold coffee machines. Oh, <laughs> so, cool! Sell security technology, so that's yeah. a big transition. But. Very cool. Also, it looks like people are starting to flood in here, so uh, just FYI. So I'd say give it a few more minutes, then uh, whoever is. Whoever wants to lead can can start off. Cool. And are we live? You're live. Okay. Cool. I'm gonna pop off, but uh, yeah, just ping us if if you need anything, and and have a great day. All right. Thank sure. you. Thanks so much. Nice meeting you, Jeff. Bye, you Jeff. too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to everyone for joining. Who's popping in early? I appreciate an early bird. We were just talking about this um, in a team meeting where we feel like as since you wait a few minutes, typically for folks to join bigger meetings to have like waiting room music, yeah. just to kind of, you know, set the stage and, and welcome right. people in. That's so good, imagine, imagine that's happening. It's a good product request for, uh, <laughs> for Zoom and, and WebEx. That's a great point. Yeah. Imagine the places it could go. <laughs> So many options. It's the audio version of, you know, the virtual background. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. We'll give it uh, another minute or two. I'll wait till the one and then we'll kick it off. Sounds good. Like the cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool, you guys ready to get started? Let's okay, roll. let's do it. Um, thank you so much to the group that we've got in the room. There's a lot of awesome sessions today, so uh, we appreciate you joining this one. I think um, it's really cool to be a part of a virtual conference. This is one of the first virtual conferences I've attended, so it's been really interesting to see how it works. Um, thank you to David Delaney and Vivian and the Tenbound team for putting this on. Um, it's been really cool to hear from other sales development leaders and other folks involved in sales development that have these great ideas and takeaways. Um, in this panel discussion, and you'll hear from our excellent uh, panel members here soon, we're gonna be focusing on the power of account prioritization. So knowing we've got a diverse set of roles in attendance and, and in the virtual audience right now, um, what we wanted to make sure of is that no matter if you are a the founder of a company or an executive that needs to be thinking about and contributing to sales development or generating pipeline or a sales development manager who has held the role yourself but is new to managing and building a team, uh, or if you're an SDR and you're trying to figure out tips and tricks to hit and beat your quotas, um, we want to make sure that you're walking away from this with something to take home and, and write home about. Um, 
So before we dive in a little bit to more about what we mean when we say and talk about account prioritization, um, I'll introduce myself and then pass it over to our other panelists. So my name is Mo. I'm the director at Green, uh, director of sales development at Greenhouse Software. Um, I care about account prioritization because I've had to work with teams from you know 15 SDRs that were, as I call it, all bound. So working inbound, outbound, working all different segments to a team of 50 SDRs globally, um, working inbound specialized and outbound across segments and figuring out where to start is the starting point. So uh, it's been a conversation that I've navigated a lot and there's always different ways to do it. So it's been a really interesting conversation so far. And let me pass the mic to you guys to, to introduce yourselves. Cool. Um, my name is Vivian Wang. Um, I'm excited to, to be a part of this panel. Um, I am curr currently the Director of Sales Development for Diligent Corporation. Um, for those of you who have not ever heard of it, which is most likely, we're a modern governance uh, solution. Um, and the reason why account prioritization matters to me is, um, you know, I've come from leading a, a sales development org at a prior company where we had 24 outbound reps, um, total outbound. Um, coming over to Diligence has been great. Um, we're slowly moving and building out an outbound team, historically um, pretty reliant on, you know, inbound, um, which is great uh, problem for any organization. But um, I think that this is um, such an important topic. Um, for all of us, especially during this time, um, as we're navigating, you know, the changes happening within the market and how that, you know, impacts us as well. Great. So uh, I'm Ron Elgisser. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Ridebound, uh, and also a sales and marketing executive for almost 15 years. Uh, been at uh, enterprise sales and marketing, uh, mid-market, uh, small, even uh, built a small business uh, outbound team once. Um, and that's actually why, uh, you know, that, that I think is the first time where I found the need for account prioritization in, in the company. It's actually targeting very small businesses where account prioritization is not optional. It's mandatory. We had tens of thousands of, of leads, which sounds like a great thing, but also a very, very big problem of how you prioritize the sales development team. Um, Rightbound, for those who uh, who haven't heard, we've, we're building a platform that's taking a really different approach to how sales teams run their B2B prospecting and outreach, really automating a lot of, of the research and the initial outreach. Not going to talk about it in this session, of course, um, here to really share from my perspective and most more important, what we've seen with SDR teams that we work with in terms of uh, account prioritization. Cool, thanks to you both. And I'll say I'm really excited to have this conversation with both of you. Um, Vivian, I've actually known for a while. We worked together, I think it's something like eight years ago, eight years ago in one of our first sales jobs. And we've reconnected for this conference and Ran, I've had the privilege to get to know more recently and we've had a lot of fun talking through this. So i um, excited to share this conversation with everybody in this room and watching the streaming video afterwards. So to, to talk a little bit more about what we mean when we say account prioritization. So no matter what kind of team you're on or where you are, there's a, a vast availability of accounts, whether that means it's assigned to you as a territory of some sort or whether you're just figuring out where to start. So the question is, where do you start? How do you figure that out from the definitions of it to the technology you're using? Uh, and then also what comes to mind is like, how do you make sure that all of your relevant stakeholders have the same answers? Um, so to uh, launch our first question, Vivian and Ran, how do you define your ideal customer profile, which often uh, indicates where to start and how much does it factor into account targeting for both of you? Yeah, um, I'll start. So obviously for any company um, of, of any size, um, the traditional sort of um, the traditional definition of, of an ICP or ideal customer profile relies around um, firmographic data, right? So that's employee count, revenue size, uh, revenue, um, the uh, industry and or vertical, depending on what definition you want to use by SIC code, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I think having that general framework is really important, especially if you're starting from ground zero. You think about who is your total addressable market for your specific product. As you start getting those new customers, you then start looking at data about win rate, right? So 
um, which companies um, am I, you know, winning deals with? And of those deals, who am I getting the highest revenue from, right? Um, in addition to that, who are the stakeholders involved or personas involved in closing that deal? Because that all feeds into how you prioritize accounts. But the way I like to say it is a company is like a breathing and living organism, just like a human being, right? They're susceptible to market conditions, um, the consumers that they that they serve. And obviously recently with, with COVID and the global pandemic and everything going on, you can see how big of an impact that's had on many organizations. So keeping that in mind and being agile um, and having a very ma malleable definition as well is really important. It's interesting to hear you talk about how, you know, your customer list is going to change. And once you build that customer list, you now have data to look through and determine if you want to make any changes to your ICP based on win rate and the personas that are driving those deals. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I want to chime in on, on an angle actually for, you know, for early stage companies, um, you know, what do you do when, you know, you have to define your ICP, right? But you don't have uh, data, you don't have, you know, enough of, of past traction and deals of, of, of what you do. Uh, and it's also related to, to us in Rightbound ourselves. We, you know, the platform that we build, in theory, you could say, well, it applies to anyone who's doing a B2B, uh, uh, B2B sales. It could be, you know, selling to small, you know, small, medium, uh, large enterprise, small teams, large teams. Um, and, and I've seen, you know, when working with SDR teams, I've, I've seen a lot of them, you know, coming to ICP and saying, well, we can fit all we can sell to we will go after the marketing persona and the it persona and we'll go after you know all industries profit non-profit and even if you don't have data i think it's it's key that you choose you make a bet and it's fine that you make a bet and you say i'm going after this and maybe you do it only for a month and try to run with that and, and do that another tip that i think is really trying to do interviews maybe not trying to sell but trying to do like interviews with relevant persona before you determine your ICP for the outbound uh, effort. Because again, otherwise, if you go too broad, you, you just waste your own resources and waste your prospect time. Yeah, that's an interesting point of knowing where you don't want to spend your time as much as where you do and learning from some of your inbound interests to help inform, you know, what that direction looks like. And, you know, both of you mentioned a little bit when, uh, about inbound and I think most sales development uh, orgs balance their pipeline creation across some combination of relying on an inbound engine and figuring out, you know, the right path to go down, and then also qualifying prospects in or out from there, where others are on a mission to outbound great companies and turn them into new customers specifically. So from an outbounding perspective for both of you, when it comes to choosing who your SDRs should prioritize for outreach over other companies, what other factors are most important? you i'll go first this time so uh um i actually i wrote my so i, I want to talk about actually not necessarily just i i think it really varies like the exact parameters uh vivian mentioned you know the size other rely on you know infographics other heavily rely on technographics i mean it really varies i think i, I want to say a few things that that i've learned and seen that as you think about account prioritization what you should you know keep in mind um one i think is that it's not a big one of project it's not that you determine your account prioritization that's it i've seen extremely you know very high success uh when you're actually doing it in a campaign format or a blitz format you're doing a priority for the month for the quarter uh for the whole team um, and even if it's not necessarily the right ultimate account prioritization for the next fiscal year um, you're still creating a joint effort of saying, okay, this month we're only going to go after a specific industry, or this month we're only going to go after com companies who work with a competitor product. And the fact that you're gathering the whole team around the same project and they're all hearing the same objections throughout the day is sometimes more valuable than creating that perfect account prioritization list uh, uh, more, more broadly. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing I would say is on the other end is actually don't over prioritize. Don't like I've, I've seen a lot of over prioritization um, and that is, you know, yes, you're getting the, the, the accounts, the TRA accounts that should be the perfect. And we all believe in, in ABM and sales pods and, and making sure we have the right effort. But when you're overdoing it, you really leave no wiggle room for the SDR. You have an SDR team and, you know, 
unfortunately, they're not going to be able to get all those tier accounts that you want. And if you narrow their list and their scope too much, they're just going to be continuing knocking on the doors of those accounts that are not responsive and the window and the roof and whatever. But instead, if, if they had a bit of a broader, maybe, you know, kind of tier B uh, accounts, they would get them because it, it's much better to approach a tier B account that's in the market and ready to buy then you know keep on pounding on on, on tier, tier a that that's not uh, not not responsive yeah I, I i love that um i've been through that myself as an sdr <laughs> uh excited to head into a list of accounts who are a perfect fit got zero responses um and and i i, I actually urge everyone also to as a part of this um as you're prioritizing accounts remember that accounts are are made of people who have different roles and now of course the buying process and decision-making process has become more sophisticated and more complex than ever. Everybody has a voice. Everybody is a stakeholder. Um, it's important to set up a sort of broad strategy that's also targeted. For example, if I have a list of 100 accounts, I need to make a decision this month. I am going to go after these three personas. And what I think, especially as you are formulating an outbound strategy um, with with content that I think is gonna resonate with them. And Ron hit on this point earlier, which is don't be afraid to ask or interview, right? People love giving you their peace of mind, ask for advice. Um, your messaging can simply be, hey, like I think that this product might be a great fit for you. Here's a, a case study. Um, and then that's where your tool stack comes into play, right? Start looking at your open rates, reply rates, how many people are clicking on those links. If you happen to have a great um, you know, asset repository that tracks how much time they're spending, great. Um, are they actually spending time on your website? Um, and then which personas care about, you know, about what, right? And you should have a joint partnership with marketing as well because inbound does not necessarily equate into a hand raise for a demo. Especially in this time, we've seen actually that a lot of thought leadership content was really necessary because people were looking for solutions to challenges and problems that we had never seen before. So that was a really important test for us to see what type of content, webinars, collateral, um, and messaging actually resonated. Um, and then using that, that, that intel to then formulate, okay, moving on, how am I gonna pivot, um, you know, based, on, based on the, you know, the intel that I actually gathered um, from that campaign. Yeah, so many good takeaways from what you both just said. I especially like the part about running campaigns. So maybe you're choosing like um, the component of your ICP of the moment to run enough outreach on to get data of what's working. And then what both of you mentioned around um, persona prioritization and knowing why and how you're speaking to different personas and that it is different both from yourself as a salesperson, if that's your role, and then in tandem with marketing. So you're, you know, you're taking to a multi-pronged approach. And then Vivian, to your point about navigating challenges that we've not yet experienced, I'm curious for both of you in different types of experiences, in now navigating selling through a pandemic and a lot going on, what if anything has changed about how you prioritize accounts or the prospects you reach out to? Yeah. Um, Gosh, I'm trying to think of, there are so many, many great examples. So, um, you know, uh, Diligent has a, a portfolio of over 20 different products um, that are uh, that are in many ways siloed as well. So I'll give you a, a great example. Um, one of our products um, is, for, um, is for the government and education space. And obviously with everything that happened, as schools were shutting down, um, you know, even local governments were scrambling, um, you know, our tool actually helped them, assisted them with, you know, board meetings and, and things like that. Um, and what we found is that most of our, you know, prior success was actually from conferences, in-person conferences. That persona historically was very difficult to get a hold of. So in terms of prioritizing accounts and actually getting back into it, we experienced, uh, you know, a month or two of, of, um, of extreme difficulty, right? We had to find an alternative, obviously, for conferences, but... Um, as it relates to where, act where SDRs were actually spending their time, we took into account things like um, what states were reopening and at what pace, right? That's something that we actually never had to think about. Um, and where do we find that information out? And is that actually going to go back, right? Is that long-term? Is it short-term? Um, 
accounts that you know have mobile numbers, for example, already logged in, right? Nobody loves getting a, a, a call you know, on their mobile numbers. We don't like to do it, but in this day and age, um, when it's difficult getting a hold of someone in the office, you know, you got to do that. So taking a look at the data that you do have within the account and deciding what is the best approach um, or channel to actually reach out to them. Is it going to be social? Is it through email? Is it through phone? Um, is it through lot, you know, thought leadership webinars? Um, and then really um, kind of honing in on that sort of segment of your accounts that fit obviously the channel in which you're going to be able to best um, have connections with your prospects. Yes, yeah, so um, try, trying to add to it and not to, to repeat. So uh, I think for us specifically, first and foremost, like for us as a company that actually didn't change much, luckily, because, you know, sales teams still need, you know, sales solutions and and that didn't change our targeting. Obviously, it changed, you know, many people are on freeze and budget freeze, et cetera, but it didn't change the prioritization from that point. But we see with, with our customers and prospects that, you know, we, we have a customer in the event industry and everyone you know can understand how they you know i mean visa boy is an example here that you know they shifted to this virtual and there are other platforms that i've seen that didn't weren't able to make that shift and you know obviously sales plummeted um our customer is actually doing something more of, of like physical um uh, 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 places for rent for 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 events uh and they had to reinvent their offering and their approach and it shifted toward you know relationship building rather than, okay, let's get an opportunity to sell. Uh, another one was uh, in the uh, applicant tracking and, and recruiting platform. Um, one would think that this would die completely, but at the same time, they what, what it actually forced them is into a, a new exercise of account prioritization, right? It's like, okay, we cannot, travel was a great industry for us. We can no longer do that. Uh, and same goes with hospitalization. Uh, sorry, uh, hospitality and 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 things like this, and 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 restaurants. But you know, um, healthcare is is hiring, uh, and delivery is hiring. And let's see how how we can shift. They literally shifted their their accounts list. They shifted from enterprise to mid market. There's, there's a lot of things that we've seen. Um, it was a good good exercise and i think there you know if when they've done that and i think you know it's almost a bit late of talking about that because you know what you, you know, companies should have done they already have done uh, in the last three months but i think it's a good exercise and a good takeaway i think companies understood that you know a prioritization is something that is dynamic right that there are constant events that force them to change that and that's you know good realization some companies that didn't have clear processes around that you know realize they have have to do it so i think you know it forced companies into a quick process around prioritization understanding of who they can go after i think you we're getting close to time but i have to ask another question and um one thing that you both touched on and what we're working on right now is elevating intent to prioritize those folks who are showing just that signals and suggesting that they might be interested at least engaging in a conversation, if not evaluating, you know, what we have to offer. Uh, and I'm curious for both of you, if we could touch on and end with this quickly, how do you define intent and how does it relate to account prioritization and where do you go to look for it? Go ahead, Brian. I, I think it's key, uh, you know, for prioritization. I would say two, two things. One, you know, there are plenty of intent sources one thing is don't get tempted to go with the standard intent signals. You know, the fact that someone got funding or is growing, et cetera, everyone or was in the news, everyone know that. It's not specific to your product and they're getting bombarded. So try to look for intent signals that are really, really unique to what you're doing specifically. And again, it could be specific technology adoption, uh, specific specific hire that, that has happened, uh, things like this. Uh, the other thing I would say is third-party intent. And again, there's a lot to talk about it, but third-party intent is not necessarily enough. We call it like inbound the outbound, build your own intent, uh, send you know content, create intent yourself by sending and, and Vivian touched that content that is relevant and engage them and engage the prospects in order to create those intent moments that you can follow up on. Uh, don't just wait for intent signals from other platforms that are out there. I feel like create your own intent could be a whole other panel discussion. Uh, that's a really good point. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I don't have much to add to, to what Ron said. He was very comprehensive in his answer. So for those of you who are lucky enough to have a, a really good you know, tech stack, I mean, we have you know, Zoom. They have great opportunity alerts by projects, direct you know, responses from surveys, down to like Crunchbase, or if you have um, kind of a, a media monitoring tool, that's awesome. Um, but just um, you know, keep your eyes open, guys. There's a lot of new opportunities out there. Um, keep your eyes open on um, what type of content people are engaging with. Um, and it's really important to have more than ever um, good conversations almost as a consultant with your prospects because you're also here to learn. And the more you listen, if you're able to get them on the line and the more you learn, the, you're more, the more you're going to be able to apply that to your, your other you know, outbound strategies. I love that takeaway of learning on your calls, learning from your prospects because they are the people that you're trying to target. So taking the opportunity to really understand what their motivation would be to continue an evaluation. Um, really good points. Thank you so much, Vivian. Thank you, Rand. This is a great discussion. I know we have a lot more to uh, to say on the topic. So if anybody listening or seeing this is interested in keeping it going, Find us all on LinkedIn. I know uh, these folks in particular are always happy to chat and I've learned a lot from both of them. So thanks a lot. And thank have a you great both day. For, for organizing it. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, happy 10 bound conference to everyone uh, watching and uh, we'll see you later. Great. Thanks guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.